Hey everyone, Steven here, and today I'm reviewing a monitor that caught my eye on Amazon as it is extremely close in terms of the specs to the Samsung G5 34 inch ultra wide monitor. This one though is from a brand named Kuri. From what I've seen online, that's how you pronounce it, but I haven't found any direct translations of this, so we're gonna go ahead and just stick with that for now. And although this is a brand that I've never personally heard of, it actually bests the G5 in a lot of ways. But before I get ahead of myself, let's go ahead and cover the specs. The Kuri 34E 6UC is a 34 inch 1440p ultra wide VA panel monitor with a 165 hertz refresh rate and a one millisecond motion picture response time. This being an ultra wide monitor means that it will have a 21 by nine aspect ratio. And one of the interesting features here will be the thousand R curve made popular by the Samsung Odyssey monitors. This covers 90% of the DCI P3 color gamut, 100% of the sRGB color gamut, and has a 3000 to 1 contrast ratio. Peak brightness is 400 nits, and this is VESA certified for HDR 400, although there aren't any local dimming zones here. For ports, this has 1 DP 1.4, 2 HDMI 2.0, and an audio jack, which there are no built-in speakers, so that audio jack will come in handy. For physical adjustments, this can raise and lower 110 millimeters, swivel to the left and right 15 degrees, and this has a tilt of 5 degrees forwards and 20 degrees back. This is VESA compatible with a 75 millimeter by 75 millimeter pattern if you want to mount this to a monitor arm. Inside of the box, you will find the monitor, arm, power cable, DP cable, and user manual. Last is the price here, which is normally $499, but this is frequently on sale for $340. Next, let's look at the panel settings. The menu button is a single button on the right hand side of the monitor, which I personally prefer as they seem to work better over multiple buttons. Opening this up, you have the quick access menu first and then the main menu. Starting with the game tab, you have FreeSync Premium, dark field bright effect which is essentially like a shadow boost next is the response time which has normal fast and fastest and actually let's take a second here to break this down really quick as my main complaint with this monitor is going to be the ghosting that you find with it running the ufo test for each of these you have ghosting no matter what but the fastest is the best option in terms of reducing overall ghosting, but not by a big margin. Now I don't have a trail pursuit camera, so I can't get the best footage here, but looking at some of the stills, you can see this is still quite blurry. Regardless of the settings with this, you're gonna get this ghosting and you're actually gonna get some inverse ghosting as well. This also has some black trailing going on, although it's not as pronounced as the ghosting. Turning off FreeSync, you will have the option to turn on the motion picture response time, and this is essentially overclocking the monitor's response time, leading to reductions in overall blur that you see with the ghosting, making these basically more distinct frames with that, but you're still seeing this. It's not gonna 100% get rid of it. I'll come back around to the response time in a little bit, but finishing off the game mode tab, you have crosshair and timer last. After that, you have the brightness slash contrast ratio tab, which is exactly that. You have the brightness and the contrast here, but you also have the dynamic contrast ratio option if you want to enable that. Next is the display tab, which has the aspect ratio, HDR, which we'll cover more in a little bit, sharpness, and gamma. Next is the color tab, which has standard, warm, cool, and user. User gives you the option to adjust red, green, and blue, but no secondary colors. This monitor leans a little red, so I've turned that down from 50 to 45 to help. Next, you have the input tab, which is straightforward, and it has your input options. And then next is the scenario mode tab, which has all of the picture presets. Starting at the very top, you have standard, FPS, RPG, RCG, which is racing games, 
movie, eye saver, ebook, DCI-P3, and sRGB. Shifting gears now, I want to cover the history of this brand or this company because I think that's something that's going to be important when I'm talking about the pros and cons. I make a lot of comparisons to the Samsung G5 because I think it may potentially be the exact same panel, just calibrated differently. Looking into the history here though, this company, Kuri, was established May 4th, 2021 in China. It's a sub company of HKC, the Hong Kong Communications, I believe. And with that, this is just a, who we are, right? So they're talking about the applications and the products that they make in this particular image. And this is all on their site. I will have a link for that if you want to kind of dig around with it. But they're starting to make display. So a newer company, one of the things to keep in mind here, but also them being this sub company of HKC. From what I've read, HKC is one of the companies that does supply Samsung. LG is one of the big ones, but it does supply Samsung with some of their LCD panels or some of their just panels in general. Now this is who is HKC off of the same about page that the previous image is from. With this, HKC was actually created in 1970 from what I've seen, but I think this is really just highlighting this is the timeline for when they start creating the display technology. Going all the way down, we see finally in 2021, this is when they create the Corey brand and then they get it on Amazon in 22 here. So again, a subset, a separate company, but it's still under the HKC global company. It's just one of those smaller companies within it. And this is going to inform, like I said, my pros and cons section, because I do think that potentially, I don't know 100% for sure, this is what I found just through some digging, that the Samsung G5 ultra wide panel may have come from HKC originally, and now they've taken that, they have this display company where they're making their own monitors, and they've recalibrated this. Because a lot of it seems so similar, but at the same time, there are some differences. And because of those differences, I may lean actually a little bit more towards this if I had to choose between the two, but I'm gonna break all of that down now. So that gets us into the pros and cons section. So let's go ahead and start with what I like with this monitor. And I think as an overall package, I would say I do like it a little bit more than the Samsung G5. And that's because with this, the vibrancy of the panel is better. You can adjust the Samsung G5, but one of my complaints with that is it had a decent calibration. This one seems better. I do like a more vibrant, colorful monitor, and this does suit that more so than the G5. Now, I may be wrong on this, by the way. It may not be the same panel, just calibrated differently. It may be a completely new panel. Regardless, on paper, these things are so similar, I think a lot of people are going to ask, hey, should I get the Samsung G5 or should I get this? There are trade-offs with both of these, and I think those are the things people need to consider, the ones I'm gonna cover right now, before purchasing either. So again, the overall colors and vibrancy of this monitor are better than the Samsung G5. I don't know that that's going to be to everyone's liking, and it's not that the G5 is bad, I just think this is a little bit better. And with that, I mentioned it earlier, it does lean a little red, but I've turned that down with this, and it does look better now that I've done that. The G5 leaned a little bit red also. So I remember having to make that adjustment. I don't have both of these, so I can't do a complete side-to-side -side comparison. It's really just based off what I remember and the footage that I have from my review. But the other big thing here, they both have that 1000R curve. It looks really good on both of these. Just keep in mind with a 1000R curve monitor, it's really just meant for one person. You're gonna sit directly in the middle. It's not something that you can really just sit to the side. It, you can, It just it's really meant for dead center. That's where you're going to get the best picture quality because other than that, you're going to see just some morphine with this because it's such a sharp curve with that thousand R curve. 
Both of the moldings of these panels look really sharp. I like the G5. I probably like this one a little bit more. It just has a smoother overall look to it. The big one where this monitor has a leg up over the G5 is all the adjustments. The G5 can only tilt forwards and backwards. This can do that, but it also has height adjustment and it can swivel. So that's another area where the Corey monitor is besting the Samsung G5, and it may be a reason to go with that just depending on what your needs are. Keep in mind though, both are VESA compatible, meaning you can mount this on a monitor arm if you want to. Now I mentioned the colors and the vibrancy, but how is performance? I think it's on par with the G5. Both of these are gonna be slower VA panel monitors, so expect ghosting. In most games, I notice it a little and it's, it's not gonna beat my daily driver, which is an OLED monitor, and that has like zero visible ghosting. But for casual gamers, I, I don't think you're gonna notice it potentially as much, or maybe just don't care as much, but for enthusiasts or hardcore gamers, this isn't a monitor you're going to like. The ghosting here will be more visible to your eye, even after adjusting the settings to reduce it. Now, for most of the first person shooters I play, I notice it a little bit. There are some games where it is more pronounced than others. There are in-game settings you may need to adjust. Maybe that game has motion blur with it and you're gonna need to turn that off. A lot of the slower paced games, I don't notice it nearly as much. Some are a little confusing though. Diablo 4 is a big one. I didn't get to play that on the Samsung G5. When I'm playing that game, the background has a level of motion blur to it that I'll even notice on my OLED monitor. So you take that motion blur that it has and now you add ghosting on top of it. It just makes it more pronounced. It actually makes my eyes extremely fatigued. I've never experienced this before with another monitor. And this is going back to what I was saying about the thousand R curve. You have the viewing angle, which is gonna look off on a thousand R curve if you're just sitting off to the side, but sitting directly in front of it, you're gonna also need to be a little bit closer. So you're not just dealing with, hey, this monitor is really meant to be viewed directly from center. You need to be a little bit closer with some of these games from what I've noticed. So most first person shooters, if there's not motion blur and stuff like that, not a big deal. Diablo 4, I noticed I had to sit closer to reduce this fatigue on my eyes. And I think that's partly to do with the game and the fact that you do have motion blur that you can't turn off on the background but then add in ghosting, black smearing, things like that. It just makes it so pronounced. You have the potential for your eyes to get fatigued. So it just like I said, they would almost like ache where I'd have to close them for a second and open them. And I was like, man, maybe I'm just tired. And that's what it feels like. It feels like you're almost tired. And it's like, no, no, no. It's only happening when you're playing this game. But again, sitting a little bit closer did help reduce this. And this is the only game that I noticed this happening with. I don't have the G5 anymore. I suspect that would be the same case with that monitor. So I can't say, hey, choose that if you're gonna play Diablo 4 the whole time. I'm gonna suspect just it's gonna happen with that as well. I don't know what it is, something to do with the game. But again, going back to the fact that this has more pronounced ghosting, casual gamers, maybe you're not gonna notice it as much. Enthusiasts, it just depends if it's one of those things like, hey, man, I can't afford an ultra fast monitor. I really want this thousand R curve. I think you're going to obviously notice it. You may be OK with it as long as you go into it knowing this is going to be present. But for very hardcore gamers that need like super fast panels, this is not going to be it. Which in regards to this issue with Diablo 4, I'm wondering if any other top down style game is going to potentially have this same issue with both of these monitors, whether that is the Kuri or the Samsung G5. It may be present with both. So if that is the type of game you primarily play, I would be mindful of that before going with either one of these monitors. Now, outside of this more apparent ghosting, again, I'm not noticing that really in first person shooters, which is a big one, it's there, but it's not incredibly pronounced. In other games, if you're playing like RPGs or adventure games or anything like that, it's there to some small degree, but not highly noticeable. The Dark Matter Ultra Wide that I reviewed still has the top spot for the worst ghosting that I've seen in a monitor. I sent that one back 
almost immediately after using it for the review because I was like, I can't, this is, this is really bad. This one, I've kept this monitor. I do like this monitor. I like what it offers. And again, the vibrancy, the mechanical adjustment, these are things that you're not getting on the Samsung G5. The other big factor here though is gonna be the price. I got this for $340 which is $5 cheaper than the G5 right now on sale, but these prices fluctuate, so do keep that in mind. The normal listing price for the Kuri is $499, and the G5 is $549, so $50 more. Now for the listing price on these, personally, I wouldn't pay either of those. There are too many monitors out in the marketplace right now that are faster and have better specs within that five six hundred dollar price range right now so don't go with it if it's that price if it's the 340 dollars i mean you're five dollars off on each it really is going to boil down to what features do you want i think part of that also is going to be looking at the company samsung has been around for a long time so has hkc but Corey has been around for only a handful of years and even though it is a smaller company under the hood of the hkc main company does that pull you towards Samsung because you know you're dealing directly with them, they've been around for a long time, and if there's any issues with the product, you can easily send it to them to get fixed. So that may be a draw in that regards. I'm not too concerned with that personally, so I would go over this. I want the physical adjustments, I want the more vibrant panel, and again, I like the aesthetics. The only thing to cover last here is gonna be the HDR, and I saved it for last because I don't think that should be a reason to get either. One, it's to me, it's fake HDR. So you're dealing with 400 nits, peak brightness. You're not dealing with a thousand. There are no local dimming zones with this. It's not an OLED. So you're dealing with a flat panel type here, meaning all the pixels are not individually illuminated. So it's not a draw. It's not a selling point. It's going to take a long time to calibrate. Yes, you can use it. It's just personally, I don't think it looks that great. It takes a long time to actually get it to look halfway decent. And at that point, you're gonna want to leave HDR on if you've calibrated everything exactly where you want it, which again, it's gonna take a long time to do. And some games it works great, some games it doesn't. It's just, it's a pain. So don't get this if you need really good HDR. It's there if you want it, but expect a lot of time being spent on calibrating it. Two last minute things I think are gonna come up, text quality on this. It's decent. You can run the clear type on Windows 11 to clean it up a little bit, but to me, it's gonna be what I would expect out of this resolution and this panel type. It's gonna be the exact same on the G5. There is some pixelation, which is why you would want to run clear type or increase the font size as well. That does help. And then backlight bleed. It does have it. This is an LCD panel, so you will see it if it's extremely dark. There are adjustments that you can make in the panel setting to make black levels better, and I do think that the black levels here are slightly better than the G5 overall, but both have that panel glow to it. So if you need something that needs extremely pure blacks, you're going to need to go with an OLED or something that has a ton of local dimming zones. For console gamers out there, if you're wondering, should you get this monitor? I say this with all the ultra wides. Xbox and PlayStation do not support native 21 by nine aspect ratio. It will stretch the image. Not everybody cares about that. To me, it looks a little bit weird. You can play an Xbox or a PlayStation with this. It looks fine, but again, you get a stretched out image. That's something that bothers me. But for anybody that has a PC and a console, they're like, hey, I would still wanna use both with it. That is 100% an option and you can do it. Just keep in mind, you're stretching out that 16 by nine aspect ratio image to fit the 21 by nine on this, or you're gonna get black bars on the side if you wanted to try and condense it down to 16 by nine. Just keep that in mind, but not a selling point, not something like, hey, I only play consoles. Don't go with an ultra wide, get something different. 
for any content creators out there that need top tier color calibration. You're not gonna wanna get this. Usually you're going with a different monitor anyways, but maybe you do hybrid stuff. You game and you do content creation. It depends on the level. If you need something that's incredibly color accurate, not the right monitor for you, but workflow stuff where you have more space on the monitor and you're sitting that good distance away from the thousand hour curve, I think this is comfortable and it's good for editing video and things like that. But if you need something that is extremely color accurate, not the right monitor for you. For the casual gamers out there and some enthusiasts that aren't worried so much about ghosting, I do think this is a solid option that again, I would choose over the G5 because we have more physical adjustments, more vibrancy, solid black levels, and all of the upside of the G5, just keeping in mind that both of those have a good amount of ghosting with them. So that's gonna wrap this video up. Let me know if you have any questions about this monitor in the comment section, and I'll answer those for you there. I'll have a link for this in the description if you wanna pick it up. Look for those sales too, because they are quite frequent. If you liked the video, hit the like button for me as it helps the channel out. If you want to continue to follow along with all my content, hit the subscribe button for me. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.